Halloween time is right around the corner, and one of the things that has become a favorite tradition of mine is to do a costumed photo project in honor of this fun and zany holiday. I've done a whole slew of different themes, and in this video, I am going to share with you some of my tips for a costumed photo shoot, just, just things I like to do, and, and I'll illustrate what I mean with my past Halloween photo projects. Also, instead of a traditional Member Monday this week, I am sharing an entire retrospective of my Halloween projects with members. In it, I share my favorite shots from each project, and I talk through a bit of the process, like the challenges or the things that I learned. Members, it is live now, so channel members, head to the community tab to see it, VIPs and patrons, there's a link below to where you can log in to check it out. And if you're interested in seeing it and other cool stuff that I share with my members, or if you just want to support this channel so that I can keep making content like this video that you're watching, <laughs> go ahead and click the join button below. Or if you don't see that because it doesn't show up on some devices, there is a link in the description. To get started, let me share with you the ground rules slash goals of any costume shoot that I do. And then we'll move into how I work within those confines and achieve those goals. And also how they might apply to you. Hopefully they will inspire you or help you create your own costumed project. Now I don't have an exact process for creating a photo shoot, but there are definitely things that I think about every time. So I tried to break them down into categories, idea, budget, story, location or environment, planning, and how I think it will be received by my audience. So let's talk about them. So the first thing is the I word, inspiration. <laughs> Creativity is definitely a strength of mine, but I do also actively hunt out inspiration. And by that, I mean that I always have my eyes open all the time. And I have pictures of things throughout the year that I've taken that just inspire me. I actually have a spreadsheet that serves as a vision board for me and the various ideas that I have. I'm like type A creative, so organization is key. And we'll circle back to that later. But if I get close to Halloween time and I don't have a solid idea, like this year, <laughs> I head to the costume store, I head to Pinterest, maybe even the fabric store, um, I may wander around the Halloween section of like Target to see if anything catches my eye. Now I've never purchased a formal Halloween costume for my shoots, but something often sparks an idea in those Halloween sections like, ooh, a cauldron. That's interesting. Huh? Ooh, witchy sorceress. The second thing I should discuss is equally as important as inspiration, and that is budget. I'm not working with a big budget here, so I keep my costs minimal and I try not to purchase anything that I won't be able to wear again for something else or something in real life. That being said, my Halloween projects are probably the time I splurge the most, like on props and getting hair and makeup done sometimes. In this shoot from last year, I purchased the witchy hat and broom, but I had the basic clothing parts already. I also knew that I would never get the pinup look for my hair and makeup done on my own, so I had it done. So my tip here is that if you are on a budget and you're going to purchase things for a shoot, try to make them things that you'd be able to use again in different scenarios, like a basic black corset and black tutu skirt could be used for any number of things. Okay story. I like to have a story to think about during the shoot. It's helpful for me as the model, but I also like to give a story to the models or my subjects that come into my studio. I find that I, or the model, gets more engaged in the product project, and it just shows up in the images. Like in this one, I was dressed up as a deer, and I was trying to go for like a deer flitting through the forest and maybe even being a little bit flirty with the viewer. You can see my budget at play in this one too, because I have several pieces of soft tool that I drape over myself and belt and use as makeshift dresses. And they're great because they can work on a whole range of sizes of models. Onto location or environment. Where will the shoot take place? I love getting outside for these projects, like I did for this Little Red Riding Hood project. I went out 
in the early morning when it was still dim outside before the sun started streaming through the trees and I was able to achieve a sort of cold and mysterious look. But sometimes I'm stuck in the studio, so I do things like create an environment there. In this droid project, I cut into my black paper backdrop, put my white paper backdrop behind it, and then put a light behind that. And by using a shallow depth of field, I achieved a sort of Death Star kind of a look. <laughs> That's the beauty of those seamless paper backdrops. I cut into it and then I just cut that part off and was left with plenty more paper for next time. The next thing is planning the actual shoot itself, thinking about gear and lighting and poses and even editing. I try to also consider what the subject is suited for, or maybe how I can adapt the idea to the subject. For me, it's usually me. So luckily I know myself pretty well, so I can decide what I'm suited for. But let's look at an example. When I thought of the angel idea, I know that I don't have a particularly angelic or wide eyed look in general. However, I had recently gone blonde, so I thought it was the best shot I had at it. So I planned out the bright environment, the poses and the editing to help the look along. And the last thing that I have to consider is my audience. Will you all be interested by the project? Because while I am lucky enough to get to do my own projects for a living, I still want to make sure to create engaging content for you all. I mean, if my projects aren't interesting for my audience, they'll stop watching and then I don't get to do this as a job. And that would be a bummer. <laughs> so for example, I knew that this project was going to be a big pain in the behind because of the multiple looks that I needed to do and also the amount of post-production that it took. However, in the end, I knew that it would be funny and that it would be a crowd pleaser. And I guess that's actually a blessing and a curse, right? Like in this case, I had to keep my audience in mind so that the project would be well received, but it also pushed me to do a project that I may not otherwise have attempted. Well, that's it, everyone. Now it's time to think about this year. I'm not sure exactly what I'll come up with. I kind of have an idea, but it's kind of like that addicted to love project, maybe more trouble than it's worth, <laughs> but I have this vision and I'd like to try to realize it. We'll see. Make sure you're subscribed and that you hit that bell so that you are notified when my new projects go live. And members, in the meantime, remember to check out the Halloween retrospective. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.